Low back pain is one of the most prevalent conditions in the UK at the moment. It can affect almost every daily activity and it is responsible for causing over 119 million workdays lost in the UK every single year. If you are one of the unlucky ones suffering at the moment with low back pain, then do stick around because I'm going to go through my top five tips on how you can recover faster from this condition. It is absolutely my recommendation to go see a chiropractor to get it properly diagnosed if you are suffering with anything in the low back. But otherwise, let's get started. You have around 360 joints and 650 muscles in your body. So you could not be better prepared to move. In fact, movement is not a choice, but a necessity for proper mental and physical well-being. There is a direct correlation between the amount of degeneration we see in the spine and immobility. So it's absolutely essential that we continue to move to keep our spines healthy. So my number one recommendation for anyone who's suffering with or even without back pain is to walk on a regular basis. You can make a very realistic target of a minimum of 20 minutes each day. And there's just two things to remember when you are walking. The first one is to allow your arms to swing by your side naturally. Don't force the arm swing, but just allow them to swing in an alternative fashion. The second thing to think about is to give yourself some long stride lengths. This will help to increase the movement that are going through your hips and your spine. Number two is to avoid stressful positions. Now, if you are suffering with back pain at the moment, then your body will generally tell you what it likes and what it doesn't like. So my general rule for you is don't do anything that increases the pain. Now, if you're not moving, for example, you're sitting at your desk because you need to work, then my general rule is to keep the joints in neutral. And this is where we come to posture. So when you are in this seated position, there are four things to remember. The main thing is to imagine that there is a string attached onto your chest and it's pulling you directly up to the ceiling. That will allow you to sit as tall as you can. That will automatically bring your spine into a better alignment and maintaining the proper curves into the spine. The second thing is to bring your shoulders back and down and then bring your head over your shoulders and tuck your chin in. This position should take the majority of the stress out of your spine. However, the seated position for any period of time is never a good position for your spine. It is designed to move. So you want to take regular breaks as much as possible. Now this position can also be applied when you are walking and when you are standing. The main thing here is to think about sitting as tall as you can. Number three might sound like an obvious one, but that is to remove the trauma. When we're looking at any issue in the spine, we're looking to see what is the cause of the issue. Now, if the cause of the issue is picking up a box with bad form, and so you're putting more stress through the spine, then you can do as much treatment as you like to the spine, but it's never gonna get better because you keep traumatizing it. I like to use the analogy of, if I keep hitting my thumb with a hammer, that thumb can only heal if that hammer is taken away. So we've got to think about what is traumatizing the spine and then take away whatever that thing is so you can allow the spine to properly heal itself. Number four is perhaps more of a surprising one, but that is to drink plenty of water. Your discs comprise anywhere between 66 and 86% water. So you want to ensure that you have enough water in your system to maintain the proper health and integrity of those discs. I would suggest anywhere between one and a half to two liters of water every single day. Number five is to eat well. The vast majority of back pain is caused by an inflamed joint in the spine. And a lot of times this is the disc. Now, if you've got an inflammatory process anywhere in the body, the food that you take in can play a big role. Now, we can generally put food into two categories. We've got the pro-inflammatories, the foods that are going to increase inflammation in your body or contribute to the inflammation in your body. And then we've got the anti-inflammatory foods, the foods that are going to help your body fight the inflammation. Now, just to say inflammation is not bad for the short term. It only becomes a problem when it's been in your body for a long period of time. So this is particularly important if you've had this issue for a long period of time, when it gets into a chronic state, because the inflammation in your spine should not be there for any extended period of time. 
Now the pro-inflammatory foods are going to be foods such as sugars, refined carbs, fizzy drinks, red meat, gluten and dairy. And your anti-inflammatory foods are going to be foods such as tomatoes, olive oil that is preferably uncooked, green leafy vegetables, nuts, fatty fish and fruit such as strawberries, berries and oranges. What I would suggest is go online, just type in anti-inflammatory foods and have a look to see what foods you can start including in your diet and try to bring yourself further towards the anti-inflammatory diet and away from the pro-inflammatory diet. Most of this stuff is relatively straightforward. It's generally the healthy foods that are gonna be the anti-inflammatory foods and the unhealthy foods are gonna be the pro-inflammatory foods. Now, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please do hit the like button if you found it useful. Be sure to subscribe for new videos every single week and please do comment below any success stories that you've had from anything that I've mentioned on this video today. Have a great rest of your week. Love you all. See you soon.